Um, yeah, Did I responded to all of us. I think I sent it. Oh, let me make sure I sent it. Oh, here, now, now it's there. Oh, okay, good. cinema <laughs> oh oops <laughs> i know just figure out mine too hi everyone welcome no no everybody hello Howdy. Ken, I'm so glad you've joined the board. I'm sorry I missed our last meeting. That was was that your first meeting? Oh, I think he's frozen. And Jesse too. Welcome. <laughs> My first official meeting, actually. So thank oh, you. Oh, you're you've been sworn in. Well, they told me I'm in. I, I didn't get any. I didn't get to swear. I do enough of that at home, but I. <laughs> But I got the letter saying that that yes. So congratulations. I don't know COVID, they passed. I don't know. Awesome. Okay. Ryan, are you are you with us? Or are you not with us? I know. He may have just put that there to hold the spot or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Ryan e emailed that he was um, sick and not able to join us this evening, but I think he's still somehow managing to record the Zoom for us. So that's great. So we are recording. Um, if oh. I think we should wait a few more moments. And since we still have, we have some new members, I think it'd be great to just go around and do some basic intros before we launch into our um, agenda tonight. But it's so nice to see everyone's faces. <laughs> Who did you say was sick and not able to come? Brian. 
Oh, okay. So this really is just like Avatar. Avatar. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I don't know. I was thrown off by the, um, I think he like set up the Zoom for us and just started the record. Yeah, be it. I'm just but um, okay. I, I wouldn't have been surprised if he emerged from the icon. Uh -huh. <laughs> and bear with me. I'm trying to take the minutes here. So making sure I get everybody's name. Yeah, here. Yeah. Rachel's here. Yay. And Freeman, Ellen, and yeah, Kent. Okay. Okay. We have a new Jesse. Hi, Jesse. How's everyone doing so so far? How are you doing today? So tired. <laughs> twenty twenty over yet? <laughs> Fine. Thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Living the dream, I say. Living the dream. I'm just not sure whose. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's a good way to frame it. I'm also really tired and I think kind of sick. Um, no, not another one. Ay, ay, ay. But it's okay. I like, I I have a Christmas tree up for the first time in I don't know how many years. Nice. Did the quarantine thing, so it's, I'm in my I'm not in my my office, aka bedroom, for the first That's time. A nice house for a Zoom meeting. It's nice. Cool. Do you have any scary symptoms, or do you feel certain, pretty certain that you it's not COVID? I am fairly certain it's not COVID. Um, I think it's a cold, but I'm gonna do a telehealth and and do a test probably. Um, I, I cut my Christmas tree down myself and I think I was just like outside in the cold mm. and I have zero immunity. And we've just been like indoors for so long that like any variation from the temperature I'm used to or whatever, I think just zapped me, but I don't know. I'm, I'll get, I'll get tested it, but I'm not nervous um, about that. And I would be if I had those symptoms. Mm. It's the healthiest I've been in a long time. That's awesome. Really, because don't have contact with anybody. I don't get cold. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it'll be a really low flu season. Season. Yeah. Well, it should be. That's what people are saying. I know. And in, um, in the spring, when uh, the, the, you know, the seasons are changed, they had a, down in South America. They had a low flu season. They didn't have, you know, the occurrence of flus, flu was markedly decreased in South America. Oh, that's good to hear. Their, their winter, which was our summer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Um, so if anyone else wanted to wants to share, like, how they're feeling, feel free to jump in. If not, then let's get started with some intros, and you can include how you're feeling in your intro if you'd like. Let's maybe do, like, name... Um, if you use pronouns or feel comfortable sharing them, you can like say what your pronouns are. Um, you could also just put them in your um, name by clicking the three dots in the top right hand corner of your Zoom if you feel comfortable, but no one has to. Um, oh, Kathy. Yeah, just to make that announcement, um, I just for the minutes and I, but only because I'm trying to, that, uh, that this meeting is held via Zoom. I think this is because the official business and that audio and video videos recorded and it's focused on emergency supposedly related topics and you know if we have public comment if if not yeah do no public comment any public comment open for public comment all right um thanks, and, <laughs> thanks, thanks kathy for the yeah. formal announcement yeah um so I, I didn't i should we call the meeting to order i was thinking we do intros and then call to order does anyone want to move to, I can, I think I can move right to call the meeting to order. Yep. Anyone I take it to? there's no Brian tonight. Yeah. Brian's up <laughs> tonight. So here I am fumbling parliamentary uh -huh. procedures. <laughs> uh, and then the other person out is Ashlyn also emailed. She won't be able to come. She's oh. ill. So. Okay. Okay. Is that the only person missing then? Well, Let's see, uh, Michael Abiatello. I don't. I can. I'm sorry. I'm. All right. All right. You're here. Okay. I'm. I'm like on my. Uh, on my. Um, not on the. On my. On the, no. the screen, so I can't see everybody because I'm typing away. Stephen. Is Stephen? Yeah, he's not here yet. So Stephen. Okay. 
print. Okay. The ink, so that's okay. Great. Okay. So I'll move to start the meeting, open the meeting. Mm -hmm. Anyone care to second? I'll sure. Second. Oh, go ahead. Okay. All in favor? All right, meeting is open. <laughs> um, let's do some intros. So maybe name, your pronouns, if you feel comfortable sharing them, um, something you're excited about that you've been a part of on the board or that you're excited to get involved with on the board. And if you wanna share how you're feeling or a fun fact that is gonna like help you get to know new members, um, include that too. And if not, then we can do a shorter version. It's fine too. Anyone wanna start us off? I, I don't mind going first, I guess. Um, my name is Jesse Hassinger. Uh, not an official member yet, but I got an email from the mayor's office saying that uh, they're recommending me and I just have to go through the uh, city council okay. approval. Um, so I guess I'm halfway there. Um, okay. <laughs> so that's exciting. I'm happy about that. Um, looking forward to uh, hopefully joining uh, everyone here and uh, let's see uh, I go by him her they I, I it really doesn't make much of a difference to me quite honestly and um, yeah today's been today's been good today's been a day off which is always sorely needed awesome welcome Jesse happy to have you thank you pleasure to be here Jesse, I just wanted to, uh, um, how are you, how, what is your involvement in the arts? You're, why you're here, why you're interested in this? Community? Sure, yeah, so um, I've been, uh, all my life I've been involved in the arts in some way or other. Um, I was doing um, undergraduate and graduate work focused in film and video, um, as well as photography. Um, I have played music since I was like five years old, piano, saxophone, bass. And um, I've recently started uh, writing um, poetry again, and I'm in the process of writing a nonfiction book. So I, I cover all the spaces, I guess. <laughs> and uh, my wife, Amy, is a, is a fine arts painter. So nice. there we go. What's your, what's your wife's last name? Uh, Francis. Okay. Excellent. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Jesse and Amy were recently uh, guests to uh, Emmer Cinema's virtual cinema Q and A, and it was wonderful. So if, if there's a backlog of these videos if you want to check them out. <laughs> Anyone want to do intro next? Um, I'll go. Um, Ellen, I've been on the Arts Council since 2006. I'm actually a non-voting member right now because I'm kind of in between um, municipal and um, the dot org. Um, I'm a photographer. I go by she, her, or Graham. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, um, we're working on some big projects now, actually, even the, with this COVID stuff. Um, our biennial is coming up in October 2021. That's for visual art and poetry. Um, Jesse, I don't know if you know about that. Mm -hmm. And um, and we're also in the process of our poet laureate, Karen Schofield, has um, agreed to stay on an extra year because of you know because of this whole situation. But she is really interested in um, finding a junior of having a junior poet. A youth poet laureate yeah, yeah. And, and we're working on that mm -hmm. so there's lots of committees to join <laughs> excuse me time to put in um, awesome it's hard to leave the arts council i've sort of I'm, i've i've been in this i i think my tenure was up in maybe in june and i thought i would just be in this you know let me figure it out and my our, we have a two family house. Our kids were living on the other side, but it was just a very active house and I wasn't doing much for the arts council. So I wanted to wait and see how things would be once they left and uh, they've moved out and uh, I do have more time. So 
I guess I'm sticking around at least. Thanks, Ellen. <laughs> Thanks, Ellen. Who's next? Okay, I'll go. I'm Lori Steiner. I'm a she. And I have just started my second term on the Arts Council. I come from a background of, of art and music. I had, my parents were from Vienna and that <laughs> immersed me in that kind of culture and it was wonderful. Um, I'm a gourd artist and a quilt maker and I spent 16 years raising my grandson and I wanted to do something very public after doing something very insular. And here I am, that's it. Thanks, Lori, awesome. My Next. pleasure. Me? Uh, am I muted? Yeah. Um, Ken Alexander, oh geez, what? I'm a writer, primarily a writer, theater artist, primarily under that, but I write poetry and strange rants about popular culture. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm also the, uh, I'm a DEI consultant, uh, equity inclusion consultant. I work, I've been working with Community Foundation for three years, we're moving into four years, trying to move uh, Bar Foundation money into uh, arts and making sure that the arts are distributed and seen as equitable as possible here in the Valley. Um, I'm also a movement somatic student uh, that I try to combine body work with my own theater work. I'm excited to be a part of the Arts Council, uh, A, because I wanna see uh, BIPOC folks in the midst of all this. I wanna see all our communities uh, intersectionally entwined so that we make it through this next hurdle of life that we're at. And uh, I'm also really, I've been looking at privately the, the um, Poet Laureate youth programs across the US. So I've been looking at uh, all kinds of stuff, which I, I guess I would talk about down the road, but I'm, you know, I'm very happy to be here. I'm, I'm moody and uh, well, I live out by the marina, so I get to be in the fray and out of the fray at the same time. That's me. Awesome. Thanks, Kent. You're welcome. Who's next? I guess I'll introduce myself. I'm Kathy Service, and I probably have been, a, I have been off and on on the, the Arts Council. I just looked up since 1989. Wow. And, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm not, I, I, you know, I've dabbled in things, but nothing's official, but um, I would tell people, well, I can't make art, I can help make art happen. And that's why I'm here. I'm also the secretary or clerk or whatever you want to call it for, mm -hmm. even though right now I, I you know, I, I've been on, you only have three years, you know, um, two, two, three years, I think. Yeah, two, three year terms. And I'm, I, I'm yeah. off and I'm on ink board now. So that's what I'm, but I'm still taking minutes because there's no other secretary or person. So that's my claim to fame. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. And Kent, are you officially now on, were you officially got city council approval? I got city council approval. I got okay. the letter. I'm on. Perfect. Okay. I'm just doing it for, you know, the sake yeah, no, of- No, no, no. Thank you. No, no problem. Okay. okay. Thanks. I can hop in. Um, I'm Rachel, <clears throat> Rachel Hart. Um, I still feel like a new board member, but I guess it's been a couple of years now. I really can't even tell time anymore. <laughs> um, but, uh, I, uh, I work at, at Amherst Cinema. Um, uh, my background is, is largely in film. Um, and I, yeah, much of my career has been dedicated to, to supporting uh, artists and presenting art. So it seemed like a natural fit. Um, and I'm particularly invested in the grant process. I know we all are. That's um, that's something we all uh, really come together around. Um, but I, as as somebody who uh, applies for grants year round, it's also nice to be on the um, the funder side of the equation. And I I just really know firsthand how much these um, 
any grant can uh, have uh, what an impact it can have and, and the work we do here, it's really the difference between uh, certain programs existing or not existing or kind of giving a, a boost to um, those who may really be uh, in needing one uh, in order to reach a next phase of their, of their path. Um, so uh, I, I really love what we do here. I really value it. Um, in recent past, I was really, uh, really thrilled to be involved in converting our spring grant round to a COVID relief round. I think that was a, a really, um, I think it was just like a really great decision and that we were able to do it so quickly and um, really be of service to our community in a really direct way. Um, so for those reasons, I, I love being a part of this. Uh, it's one of the things that makes me feel good about how I, spend time in in uh, these days um, and I truly miss you all I this is zoom is a wonderful tool but it's no replacement for uh, being around a table so it's a uh, I, I look forward to 2021 when we're we're back in City Hall together <laughs> and, and, and we can shoot yeah. more videos in Amherst cinema Exactly. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> you. Uh, I. I take it most people here have seen uh, Kent's multiple performances in our uh, pre-show reel. <laughs> Which uh, can we have a crossover performance where for our like December? This is our December meeting. Can you take over reading a Christmas Carol to us? Oh my gosh! <laughs> that was my. That would have been. My, that was my favorite spot. I think the Christmas Carol. Yeah. So good. I do whatever really, I can to help. If, if if I can bring money in, I'm always happy to help. So awesome. Thanks, Rachel. Um, for our new members, I just want to clarify, we do the Northampton Arts Council does two grant rounds. We do one in the spring and we do one in the fall. Our spring grant round is comprised of funds that we raise or out and allocate from our budget, and we set the rules for that grant round. Um, which is worth noting because I think we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, in the fall grant round, which we're all going to be evaluating in the next few weeks together, that money comes from MCC and the state sets the guidelines for distribution, but we, we choose, um, we review applications and we choose how to allocate that money. But overall, I think over the course of the year, we give away about like 50 to $60,000 to um, artists, cultural producers um, in the form of these grants. So just a little background. Uh, Eamon or Freeman, anyone want to jump in with an intro? Um, I'll jump in. Um, uh, my name is Freeman Stein. I've been on about the same time Rachel has. Um, and uh, I'm uh, also uh, like uh, Kathy, a, a supporter of the arts rather than an artist myself. Um, I really got my intro to being more engaged in the arts when I was um, running a visual and performing arts program at the Chestnut Middle School in Springfield. We had a federal magnet grant <clears throat> to theme around the visual and performing arts. And um, one of the ideas that I had was to really look at the notion of performance in art and to help teachers understand how to uh, learn from the arts about how to incorporate performance as an assessment tool for themselves rather than the more traditional kinds of uh, assessments that teachers were inclined to do. And that was really exciting. Did a lot of work with the Springfield Museum and Library and Stage West and uh, Springfield College and a lot of independent artists, um, met uh, many artists who are up here and then I moved over to um, the Renaissance School. I became, I was one of the founders of the Renaissance School in Springfield and, and performance was a really important part of their program. And then I retired in 2013 and I'm excited about um, doing some of that work here in Northampton. So that's what I'm doing. Thanks Freeman. Nice to be here. I'm Eamon Edge. I'm a uh, graphic designer. Um, I've been on the board for, I want to say, three and a half years, I think now, uh, in the, about like almost in the middle of my second term. 
Um, and I've been in Northampton for about uh, eight years or so. Um, I'm Danielle. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm our board chair. Um, I work at the Meat Art Museum at Amherst College during the day and am involved in um, a bit of local activism in Northampton. So I'm probably most excited about um, bringing some of those equity and inclusion initiatives to the work that we do throughout the board. Um, and that comes with recruiting board members, right? So um, I would especially encourage our new board members if you're interested in helping do outreach, like shoot me an email. We have a template that we can send out to folks. Um, if you know people who would wanna join, we still have quite a few vacancies and there's plenty of room um, for folks to, to be a part of the work we do here. And we want, we all want that. So um, please help and, and be a part of that. Um, and then another, another way we do that is through um, the grants process as Rachel was just saying, like that was, that's kind of important to me. And I'm really looking forward to meeting with the grant sub committee in the coming weeks to talk about retooling our spring guidelines and finding ways to emphasize BIPOC artists in the, the solicitation and the communication that we do for that grant round, um, which we have more agency and control over. Um, and finally, one of the things I love most about being on the board is how collaborative and um, supportive this team is. Like, I really think of you all as, as thought partners and, and friends. And I would just say in the spirit of that to our new members, like feel free to like make connections through the work that we do together on a board, but then also take that outside of the board work as well. Right, like, feel free to bring those collaborations elsewhere and and call upon each other for for ideas and support and to to sound ideas back and forth. Um, I think that will have um, ripple effect in our community. So, um, without further ado, um, I Can think. Can I add something, Danielle? Sure. Um, Freeman and I were going to work, uh, do some work within the school system, but of course, because because we're both very interested in kids. Um, and that has, for obvious reasons, been completely tabled for a while now. And it looks like it's gonna continue to be tabled until further notice. So I just wanted to throw that out so people are aware of it. Great, thanks Lori. So I was, I was gonna suggest that we actually look at the agenda. I don't know if folks have had a chance to review that. Um, Brian sent around a doc I also quickly just turned it into a Google Doc that I can share in the chat. Um, I think you should have access to it. If not, just let me know. And, and if you can't, Brian, send that email. So um, so first I'd like to say, has anyone, have, have folks had a chance to review the minutes that Kathy sent out from last meeting? Um, can I move, I'm not sure, do we have quorum, Kathy? You're on mute. Sorry, I don't know how many people we have officially now who are members. Um, let me just go see who's on the on my. I'm me, Ken. Uh, okay, yeah. I'm not Rachel, voting. Rachel's still on. Um, so Lori Freeman, Kent, you, Eamon, and uh, yeah, I guess, I mean, because the only people, so it would be probably. I think we have, have think we have corn because the only two people that aren't on, um, who aren't here, are Ashlyn and Michael Abiatello. They're the official <laughs> Muni people. So, okay. Great. So I think we have an. I. It looks like we do. And Jesse's not yet a, quite official yet. <laughs> so I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Freeman seconds. Okay. Flavor. Great. Why well, can't I'm not on Muni? I, I wasn't at the last meeting, so I think that means I need to uh, abstain. Is that correct? I think I think so. I, just want to make sure. I never can remember that if you're not at the meeting. I don't know who's Robert's rules. <laughs> I, I don't get that. So maybe Kathy, can you just note uh approved with whatever yeah. number you have and if it's not a majority then I'll we can figure it yeah I'm, I'm pretty one. sure I I think even if Rachel doesn't I think we have enough people because basically I think we don't I mean the only people if it's Rachel doesn't it's just two others so I, I think we have we have um you know half plus one so we do have quorum I mean Great. we do have enough people to vote and everybody voted in the affirmative yeah 
Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you. So if we look at our committees, the first is our artist reception, and it looks like that's tabled. And then onto the biennial, Do, does anyone want to give an update on the biennial and maybe even a little bit of background information for our newer members? Um, sure, I mean, Kathy and I can fill people in and Lori also. Um, I think we've been doing the biennial, I think oh, yeah. since 2007 or mm -hmm. early on for a while. So every other year we have a, we were having, we had a visual art um, biennial um, partnered with Forbes Library and we take over the whole Hausma Gallery. Um, it's a juried, um, it's a juried exhibit. It's open for submissions from all people, artists from the Western Mass County. So Franklin, Hamden, Hampshire, and Berkshire. And, um, and we have an opening, usually on Arts Night Out, we've had a big opening. And um, I mean, it's, when, I, when I came on the board, there was a ton of, ton of music, but not a whole lot of visual art going on, mm -hmm. you know, that was supported by the Arts Council. So this was a, a really great event to add. And then a few years ago, we um, decided to open it also to poetry. And um, so now we have um, a piece of the biennial is also poets sub submitting poems. We have ju um, juror, you know, jurors specifically for poetry. And then we have a reading um, at the Coolidge Room mm -hmm. at some special specified time during the month of October. Mm -hmm. And um, it's kind of in a nutshell. Yeah, that's that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah. And we had um, we met last Monday evening. Mm -hmm. Kathy, Lori of this group was there. Yeah. Karen, Zoe, Karen met and uh, Zoe, 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 Zoe Zassen, who's yeah. not an arts council yeah. member, but who's yeah. going to be part of it. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of decided on a theme that we would bring to the board. So I can tell you what that is. Or do you want to tell them, Kathy or Lori? Oh, uh, no, you could, you could go start and start. I'm uh, trying to take minutes here, so bump it. Um, we kind of decided, particularly with Karen's, Karen Skoldman, who's the poet laureate, really wanted something very broad. She felt it was much easier for poets to respond to a theme that's very open. So we um, decided on an open call and instead of having an, like an, a specific theme, we're gonna frame it within a specific period of time. And if people submit work that was made or completed from January, 2020 mm -hmm. to June 1st or June 30th, 2021. And that would be the, and you know, most of the submission, when we ask for submissions, we ask people to think broadly and openly about it. So it, they, if people want, they can respond obviously to what's going on, um, you know, how it's impacted them. But some people might just be delving into their, you know, what their, what their usual work is. Mm -hmm. Some people might be, you know, doing more political stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of what we came up with. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We're gathering um, names of jurors and um, the committee will, we have a date set for another meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and prior to that, we'll probably take a look at all these people, try to put, we usually have three jurors for poetry, three for visual art. And we'll just try to look for, you know, a good balance of, of people. I know that Karen already invited, what is his name? Um, That's George. Um, Juan. Um, Oh, I know that Susan Kahn of Perugia Press right. has already agreed mm -hmm. to serve as a juror. And um, Karen has asked Juan Ma 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 Matos. Matos, Matos? Yeah. Anybody, know Can anybody know him? He's the um, Worcester Poet Laureate. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Um, and we're waiting for a response from him. Ellen, I would, I would say, and, and Kathy and Lori, I wonder if one of the things that we might think about, since these are paid positions, um, if um, 
if we're thinking about identity and representation on our on our jurors, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Like, they should, yeah. Yeah. Should yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So on the visual arts, um, since and I and I say because I feel comfortable knowing that it's a paid position, mm -hmm. there is an awesome curator of um, visual art at the Mount Holyoke. College Museum of Art, whose name is Stephanie Sparling. Yeah, I have her down. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Um, Stephanie Sparling Williams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, might be a good person. Mm -hmm. to um, my my neighbor is um, Abigail. Um, it's Hoover. Do you know Abigail? Mm -mm. Oh, right, you're at Amherst. Um, she's at, she's at Mount Holyoke. She suggests this person. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this, we're, we were trying to, I agree with you. Thank you. If you want, I can um, just copy and paste all the people that we have so far. Hmm. Yeah, or if you're if you're keeping track of them in a Google Doc or something, if you share yeah. it with a group, everyone can like comment in, right? Like, I don't really know any po poet poetry <laughs> judges, but I'm sure that, you know, Kent might know some hmm. and Jesse might know some. Right, and Jesse, I would imagine, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can all throw our, our right. hats in the ring that way. Cool. Yeah, I think okay. you're all in there. Yeah. Oh, maybe not. Okay. This is the first Google Doc I've ever done, and I'm, I'm not the, sure I've been really successful with it. Well, you're like me, Ellen, actually. No, um, it's good. Danielle, it's I don't see you here. Add people. How do you add? Oh, I see. Okay. Go ahead. Um, and that's that's pretty much the biennial. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. Yeah. So we're having another meeting, mm -hmm. and I know that. Um, well, we're going to do a poet laureate thing separately. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and we say actually segued from the uh, the biennial into the poet laureate meeting, and it was basically a Karen. Um, Ellen, myself, Matt, and Kent, you're on the list. I'm inviting you next time. We, I don't know yeah. how we missed it. Thank you. That's what, well, I wasn't official. It's yeah. okay. I don't feel rained on. Okay, good. Please don't. Um, the other, the other issue that we have, both Ellen and I have to deal with, we have our, our own little personal Zoom account. So we're, we're kind of limited to, to 40 to minutes. 40 so. minutes. Yeah. So Ellen, always, Ellen will do the do the um the biennial uh, the official biennial meeting on her account and i take over for poet laureate so all right you know i mean i also have my own we also do google meet i mean that'd be the other thing that's got no i mean as long as there's not a bunch of time and you can just yeah. sign into yeah. a google doc i've google also doc. um just started using a thing called gather oh, I yeah and that that's open-ended up to 25 people yeah yeah, yeah. so that's um, great. So we, we are still, I mean, as, as Ellen said, she talked about the jurors. Karen really is taking taking the lead here in terms of organizing, you know, the the um, Poet Laureate. And the big her big um, focus this time around is the Youth Laureate. So she's trying to get in touch with the um, other communities. And I think you'd mentioned, Kent, like Worcester had a Youth Laureate, et cetera. Trying to figure, I think the thing that we're really trying to figure out is, What's the process that, you know, how do you determine, you know, who should be chosen for the, for the well, and, and, and just to mm -hmm. chime in on that, so to speak, mm -hmm. that's why I looked at several programs. I looked at, there's one in Baltimore that they have their process. What also, what rewards, quote unquote, that young person, he, yep. she, they get. Uh, there's also the National Youth Poet Laureate Program. Oh my goodness, I didn't even know. That. I looked at really, that one. It's a national youth poet laureate.org. And it's a national program. And I like them because they're connected to the arts and humanities, the Penn Center, oh, good. Poetry Society, as well as Cave Cannon, which is a poetry group of color and theater of color from Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, good. So they seem really broad based. Their website is hit or miss, but they've got some interesting little mm -hmm. bios of the individual poets, oh, but great. that process is something that we can look through and okay. sort of combine them and see what works Excellent. for us. Like, Excellent. So they, that, they have their process on online? They don't have a process, but I sent them a letter. Excellent. Enough asking. Great. Excellent. Okay. Party on. <laughs> Thank you. 
There's um there's also I, I think I've mentioned this, but it was it's been a long time. I believe there are at least two poet laureates at Smith. Yes. Um who were poet laureates in their yeah. hometown or city oh, yeah. and then have come to Northampton. Yeah, Karen's mentioned them. Yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 Oh they, great. So um Alan, I did get the doc and I dropped it in the chat. So so if anyone has juror recommendations, feel free to go into that Google Doc. You should have access. If you don't, then request access and Ellen will get an email and can approve okay. you that way. Okay. Um, but that looks great. So you did a great job with your great. first Google Doc. Oh, good. <laughs> um, I also wanted to clarify for our newer members, you don't have to be a member of the Arts Council to join one of these subcommittees. Exactly. So we mentioned Zoe being involved. She's a local artist who lives in Williamsburg and is really involved in Florence and Northampton, mm -hmm. can't be on the council due to her zip code, but is on the subcommittee. So mm -hmm. if you have friends or relatives or mm -hmm. colleagues that you think yeah. might wanna be involved on a very specific kind of project, you should feel free to invite them into those subcommittee meetings. Good, point. Um, thank you. And Mike join. <laughs> um, Mike joined, so just want to say hi. Welcome hi, Mike. To, to the meeting. Um, hey everyone, sorry for the delay. That's okay. No worries at all. No worries. Um, I think next on our uh, like big agenda, next committee is cinema, which is I think tabled until we figure out um, possible streaming stuff for for winter. Um, equity committee, I guess is also tabled. We haven't had a meeting yet, but I think we should have a meeting in the next, I don't know if it's possible before the holiday, but if not before the holiday, maybe first thing in the new year with some of our new members to talk about the spring grant round um, and any other um, broader planning that we wanna do. Um, uh, grant round, we, we um the i think folks saw the oh rachel are you on mute sorry i was on mute but i was just saying that i was really thrilled that uh kent and ashlyn joined the equity committee great thank you kent <laughs> yes thank you mm -hmm. um grant round does anyone rachel do you want to give a grant round update i I honestly feel underprepared, but that's in part because I don't think there has been too many updates because the grants are not due until next week. So basically we'll be in go mode once we once the uh, application deadline has passed, but until then we're still in our waiting period. But uh, Danielle, you may have more info on the timeline thereafter, which I know we need to did the amount come out? Do we know at the amount it was decided yet? Because I think at, when I'm looking at the minutes, they, they weren't right. sure the amount that we'd be getting. I think it was, I remember seeing somewhere that it was the same as last year, but I could be thinking of, because mm -hmm. or I think maybe we speculated that it would be the same as mm -hmm. last year because mm -hmm. the arts overall budget was the same as last year. Mm -hmm. Right, MCC had level funding, which is a huge relief and in wonderful news, but I don't know for sure if the cultural councils received the same amount broken down within the greater MCC budget. Mm -hmm. Ryan probably has the answer to this, but I'll do a little digging while we okay. keep talking. I don't think it was officially announced yet. I don't think it was, I don't, it's not, I don't think it's on the website yet. We have 17 applications in process, uh, some of them not very complete, but as Brian has pointed out, and as we've noticed in the past, that should happen next week when the deadline approaches. <laughs> so the new deadline is the 15th. And I think at that point, we all get access to the portal to start, or I think that we already have access to the portal to start actually reading the applications. So our committee can probably send out an email, especially to include our newer members about how to do all of that oh, and track down right. the, yeah. the how to log in because I'm a little rusty on it too. Um, and then the way the process works is that um, I believe we um, assign out um, categories. So there's visual arts, performance art, music, dance, theater, uh, yeah. mixed oh. media, um, and I don't know, Freeman, are there others that I'm 
And I'm not remember. I think you said it seems like there's something else. There's a school, right? There's, Mix, there's mixed school. media. I, there's school. Say, I think there's um, school. Yeah. yeah, film and video, um, literature. Um, I have to kind of go down. Yeah, visual, music, theater, dance, um, mixed media, liter literature. I think I think I pretty much. I think we've got most most of them covered. I think. And this so we assign those out depending on the number of applications there are. And usually one or two people will cover an entire category. Um, and by covering a category, what I mean is read those with special attention and mm -hmm. special care mm -hmm. in order to be able to present them back to the wider group. Mm -hmm. the, the goal is for all of us to try to read all of the applications, mm -hmm. but it can be a bit robust and everyone is busy. So um, the, the idea is that each of us presents back um, and is an advocate for the applications that we read. Um, and we can provide more guidelines for how that happens later on, but we have a, we have a whole set of guidelines um, by which we evaluate these applications. And then um, as a group, we discuss, uh, we give, um, we fill out a rubric, each individual fills out a rubric, like get, uh, scoring each application. And then as a group, we meet to discuss um, which get, well, the rubric determines which are like uh, qualify for funding, right? And then we need to discuss the allocation amount. Kent? Mute. Sorry, you're on mute. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just talking with my aunt as you were talking. I just, I'm just thinking out loud. With, yeah, okay, so you use the rubric to move yeah. the books up top and then to figure out the money allocations yeah. once you have this pool yeah. of applicants that have been chosen, so to speak. Yeah, we yeah. usually have like three categories to kind of look at. Obviously, artistic merit is the one at least currently that has the most weight per se. And then there's feasibility and then financial and stuff like that, or no community uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and then uh, fiscal and uh, feasibility in general, you know, mm -hmm. just, but those are our basic, those are the, the current, um, you know, criteria that we evaluate um, each piece on. So and where you fall, you give people a score, mm -hmm. the artist mm -hmm. a score. Yeah. And yeah. what, well, and what we usually, uh, oftentimes if you have, a, it, it depends on how large or how many applications there are in each category. Cause sometimes you, you'll get like, uh, a, re a category that has so many applications so it really should have two people reviewing each of them and and one of the things that we like to do with newer board members is that to, to partner up and having somebody who's seasoned to kind of partner up and kind of explain the process mm -hmm. and and work together and tag team together on on the applications and the basic is to read the applications and then you know if they're questions um, for many artists, this might be their very first grant. So we don't like to penalize people just because they haven't filled the grant in perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if there's questions around the, the budget and or space or what do they mean by that? The other thing that um, we ask for is um, supporting materials. So many of us who are who've kind of are, are patrons of the arts know a lot of a lot of the um, artists, but we don't we you know, we it's, we base it on on um, supporting materials, too. So we, we discussed a lot of that. OK, I have a quick question around that is um, and just to this matter. I know your process seems very similar to the process we use for a community foundation for Valley Creates. But one thing we've come across lately is there are a lot of artists with disabilities. And so mm -hmm. one of the things that we sometimes do is if we know an artist, he, she, they mm -hmm. has difficulty even writing, for example, okay, good point. and then we reach out and go, can we do that service for mm -hmm. you? And you mm -hmm. tell, you know, rather than filling in the gap, so to speak, but just sort of acting as a secretary. For, so I don't know how far you're willing to go to access those artists. So that's part of a question I have for that community, because that community is a lot of artists who have right. those right. kinds of difficulties. Well, no, and I and I think that's a that's a good thing. Having, if you can believe it, I don't know if you know Temple Grandin. 
Um, we, we really wanted her. I was part of, of a national uh, na, na, a board of a national nursing organization working developmental disabilities. And we really wanted her to speak. So I'm the one I talked to her. I'm the one who filled out her, her, her point, you know, everything, all the paperwork she needed to do mm -hmm. to appear in our, in our conference. I filled it out. So I understand how that can be. So, so you are willing to do, we are willing to do that. I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, sure. So, we we actually had a question about this for this grant round and it has to, so we had to work really closely with mcc oh, okay. to figure out um how to support one person's application right mm -hmm. and to your point kent we didn't seek this person out they sought us out and asked for help with the process mm -hmm. so freeman where did we you you started liaising with that artist whatever happened with with that application did you end up typing it in or providing no i think i i i never got involved he got the support for him and i don't know if he's i can't, i have to go back and check and see if he's actually submitted something hmm. now how do we find out about it did he contact or how do we know that this person I, he contacted brian i believe Perfect. okay good good and then i followed up with him okay he, brian asked you to okay good with that said, we should definitely add it to our agenda when the grants committee meets mm -hmm. and when the equity committee meets to think about even mm -hmm. just having a thing for accessibility concerns, reach out to right. here's the okay. service we provide exactly. Like we should definitely do that. And then whether it's within the capacity, I think for the spring grant round, mm -hmm. we can say that it's within the capacity of this board to fill out an application because it's our form. I think mm -hmm. for MCC, if it's, if it's not within our capacity to do that, then we reach out to the MCC rep and ask for someone from their office to oh. assist with that. Okay, so, so, I, so that's but we should clarify it. To do? Is that what the MCC said to do? Is that what you're saying? For the, yeah. I'm not sure where we, yeah. Yeah, she, she did. She said that they, that, that they should contact them because okay. the, because of the access to the, the application. Right. The online application. Cool. Okay, okay, okay. Perfect. Um. Okay, so anything else for grants, questions, or updates? Rachel, are you on mute? Um, do we want to assign categories here so that we're just ready to dive in once they come? Or um, we the, the thing we don't know is how many of each category has come through, but I, I think we could potentially yeah, I think we could, I think maybe if folks want to express interest in a category mm -hmm. and Kathy, if you're able to just note that in the yep, minutes we'll and that. we could use that we'll as our, that our template and if anyone has a burning desire to switch later, we will have time to do that. Mm -hmm. um, does anyone have the categories I think, handy? I think Brian, I think Brian actually already did a preliminary list of that. I don't know if that was based on the past, what was done in the past, and it certainly needs to be revised now that we have new members. Um, mm. I, I, I recall I'd have to go look and see, but I think in one of his, his, uh, you know, before the delay was before it was extended, really, the okay, was extended. Mm. But I don't have any problem reviewing that. I mean, mm. I I'd love to see the categories I put down theater dance, but I also realize I don't know how you divide categories up or, you know, what's what if one side's one also I'm flexible yeah. myself. Well, you know, isn't it usually the when and remind me if I'm, I'm incorrect, but usually it, you know, how, how does it determined at the point does does the artist determine when they're applying what category they belong in? Yeah, they select. I think. Yeah. And then during the, I mean, and sometimes we'll find out, as you were saying, Kent, that we're being like, well, no, this really should be in, he, in this category. Or it's, and actually, some, a lot of art just kind of spans a couple categories. So, well, right. And I think there's a, lot, there's a lot of multidisciplinary artists. Right. So that's, that's why one of the categories. Categories, right. right. Mixed media. Right. All right. I pasted the categories, but I'm realizing that literature is missing. Yeah, so painted it, pasted it again with literature. Okay. Is anything else missing? Also schools. Schools, yeah. Um, but schools is a checkbox. It's like, it's a, am I right about this? It's like it, you apply under another 
one of these categories and you check if you're applying as a school? Yeah, I think in our, I think in our application in the spring, mm -hmm. we have schools as a separate I think that's what it is. They may not have a okay. separate in the MCC mm -hmm. okay. application. Okay. So, so is anyone particularly excited about dance? Yeah. Is this people are looking here? I can see on the on the chat. Looks like yes. People. Okay. <laughs> I will. Um, I have a degree in dance, so yeah, I could definitely be a part of that. And uh, you know, being the TD at the Academy Theater would also be something I'd be more than willing to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Media arts. I usually am in that category. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. Yeah. Oh, oh mixed media to me? Or do you mean mixed media? That's it. Or we do yeah. have film and video. We used to have film and video. I think these are the what MCC is calling. Oh, okay. So now it's okay. So, so now I think it's dance, yeah. media arts, which. Okay. Um, I would include, I think, film and video. Okay. Um, okay. And probably whatever we want it to include. <laughs> okay. Uh, multidisciplinary. What does that mean? Well, your question is theater and visual arts, is there a comma there or is that the same thing for them? Separate categories. Separate categories. Okay. If I, I know there's someone else said theater, if no one goes into multidisciplinary, I would jump on that. Or I would prefer theater, of course, but if there's no money there, I'm fascinated by multidisciplinary arts. Okay, so that's sort of what my work is anyway. So okay, okay. so okay. okay, so all right. So let me just because there's a, where it's all of stuffs going on here. So the lists are dance, right? This is I'm taking from the MCC dance literature, right? Dance, um, mixed, media arts, me, film, media, okay, visual, right? Multidisciplinary. Multidisciplinary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Music. Okay. Theater and mm -hmm. visual arts. Okay. Oh, that's so it seems that MCC does not have a literature. Oh, they do have literature. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, Actually, I'm, I'm just double checking. Okay. Sorry. I, I, yeah, I'm getting mixed up between our spring and fall rounds. Yeah, me too. I'm like, yeah. I'm so used to the other one. So, thank you. Um, is anyone particularly excited about music? Lori? Yep. Lori? Yes, please. Who's doing, you're gonna do the music. Okay, I'm putting, I'm just tentatively getting it. Cause I, I'm, I'm not looking at if people are raising their hands any, I'm, a, I'm on my typing screen, so. Sure. Great. Bear with me. Theater? Uh, we, have, we have Kent as an option. Is anyone, if anyone else interested in theater? Mm -hmm. Um, visual arts, I'm happy to. Me too. Um, so that's Kathy, that's Alan and Danielle for okay, thank visual you. arts. Literature, anyone excited about literature? Well, I can even, I can do that. I mean, if, I'll do that. If nobody else wants, I can do it. Okay. Great. And it seems like we have like a couple of people doing two categories and oh, yeah. that's fine. Some people don't have categories yet. And once we know the number, we can always yeah. Yeah. reallocate, but it's good to have a little bit of a and did Mike say he wanted to do a uh, dance, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, his partner's a dancer. He would try to get. Okay. Great. Great, great. Okay, so we have a tentative allocation and it's not written in stone. So if anyone wants to change. And, and, uh, and um, Rachel, you're doing, I'm sorry, the media, right? Is that what you said? Um, yes, or okay. film and video, whichever it's called. Wait, 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 <laughs> they're all in the same one, okay. Still trying to open the current application okay okay so we have we don't have anybody yet for multidisciplinary right is that the, the only well, Ken said he would do it yeah well he's got two of them oh boy well I see, yeah I mean it may be someone else that wants theater yeah well, we'll, we'll see you know you never know how many it's going to be it may we should see what how it shakes out but I think theater doesn't get as many no, yeah. applications as multidisciplinary. So, so. so combined, it might end up being a, a manageable amount. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And we can always, t you know, tag team there. And there, there are, oh, Eamon, you know, he wants something, we'll figure it out. Yeah, and I'm happy to help out in oh, whatever yeah. category. I, I didn't okay. say anything, but, you know, I'm happy to help out wherever there's a need. 
Yeah. The, the other thing that I, I can present and everything, but we, I, I don't know if we, we got back because I'm still on um, and Ellen, I mean, you know, I don't know in terms of voting and stuff. Um, I, I can't vote on anything because I'm not um, uh, on the municipal board right now. You know, I can present and talk about things, but as far as voting. I, did we ever get that clarified? I think that's what Brian said last time. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And there's, I don't know if Stephen plans on presenting or, or Ashlyn. I mean, there's two more people who might possibly be great picking up some of them. And I'm also, I'm happy to float and pitch in if, if there's a category that's large. Visual arts is usually kind of big, but I'm happy to split that and do something else too. Okay. Board membership, mm. any new member updates? We've got Kent officially confirmed. Congratulations, we're so happy to have you. Um, I think Jesse is in progress about halfway through the, the process. Mike, are, are you officially confirmed with all of the steps through? Yeah, absolutely, um, yes. I was confirmed uh, beginning of November. Awesome. Right last meeting. Fantastic. Uh, but I believe we still have um, at least four vacancies and infinite number of spaces for folks to be involved on subcommittees. So just to reiterate, bring your friends. <laughs> um, does anyone else have any updates on board membership? Um, online communications. Eamon, do you have any updates? Um, we have not been, so Brian and I haven't been able to find a time that works for both of us to meet up yet about the new, um, identity. Um, and just go over like what the, uh, the designers put together. Um, but so we're still trying to find a time that works because, but he's like insanely busy. Yeah. He's good. So, first night. Yeah. yeah. Eamon, where are you? Oh, in my apartment. Oh, you are. <laughs> yeah, it's a virtual background. Okay. So bad. He always does. Yeah, I was going to say that that looks not too shabby. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Glad you broke back into the Renaissance school there, Eamon. Um, I think we already yep. chatted about Poet Laureate. Mm -hmm. um, public art. Any updates on public art, Freeman? Anyone else? Mm. Um, I don't know if in the last I missed I missed the most of the last meeting, but I don't know if anyone had a chance to chat about the mural that went up on the bike path. If anyone had any feedback about that, or if you want to spend a few minutes sharing feedback on that, I see people stopping to look at it like every day. Oh, I'm nice. out there running, yeah. I go by it every day, and there's always people like. Ooh. Where so is I think it's a neat space. Um, if you are heading towards Hadley, um, it's oh. before you hit Industrial Road. It's like in that. It's in the overpass on one side of the overpass. Uh -huh. Oh, great! That's a good place. And for folks who weren't a part of that process, um, a group of students loosely sponsored by the Invincible Project based out of Springfield formed an arts collective um, that is that centered BIPOC artists. Um, and, and they proposed a public art mural that celebrated diversity. And the artists who led that group had a, or organized a series of workshops with local youth um, to talk about their vision for a future of Northampton. Um, and they used the those workshops to come up with themes and words and visual um, identities that became the foundation for this mural that um, student artists created. Um, and they fundraised money to do that. They paid the artists for their time. Um, they hosted a community conversation about the work at the opening. Um, they had really beautifully written artist statements about the reason for all the decisions that they made. And it's now installed um, where it said, um, I went to the opening and I saw, I saw Freeman and a few others there. I think, I think it's wonderful. And I'm really glad that we were able to be a part of that project in some way. Um, 
for, for context, anytime a public art project goes up, um, if it's on city property, it goes through this board for content approval. Um, so we don't always fund it. We don't always play any role in making the project happen. We did support this project, um, but just that's why it came to Brian's desk and why he shared it with us. Um, in terms of constructive feedback, I think if we were gonna do it again, I would really like to see a version of it where we are a bit more involved, like in the workshops where we can, we can help um, live stream those, bring them to the broader community, um, offer more of our resources. Um, my job is a, is a public arts, a public programmer for a museum. So I attended this program I was like, oh, I really could have helped folks um, think about the structure of how this is happening. I could have lent like some expertise to, to some of that. And I know that the, true, the same is true for most folks on this board. So um, I think it was a wonderful program and I'm so glad it happened. And I think we can do more next time. And I hope that we, we do. And I know that there are some projects down the line that might be, might be right for that kind of involvement. Um, any, so I, Lori, I think you said there were no school updates, but any school updates? Um, there's no school. Yeah. Well, the, the other thing we were thinking about, and I don't mean to interject here, is, is, is that when we have the youth laureate figuring right. out how to get the school, you know, you, you all to kind of join us in, in that discussion, you and Freeman, Lori. Well, I, I kind of think it's moot right now. Um, maybe not at the high school level. I, not I don't at know. the high school level. I mean, kids are meeting remotely. There's certainly ways mm -hmm. to access them. Yeah. There's also social media. You know, I mean, my God, there's social media. Everybody's still active like crazy. So that's not a difficult thing. I think it's just putting our heads together to figure out how best to get to them mm -hmm. and how to say it and then how to feed that information to whomever is wants to collate and put together, but. Well, maybe, um, are you talking about from a poet laureate standpoint or from just general school particip participation standpoint? Well, I'm talking about accessing students period. And in order to access poet laureates, we're gonna to have to access students mm -hmm. in general rather than sure. hand picking you know, I think this this kid's a great poet or something. I mean, it's just my opinion, mind you. I, you know, but in in my opinion, I just think the thing we want to do is access as many students from as many populations as possible to say this is what we're doing, this is how we're going about, it, and to ask for input from teachers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? To collate as much as we can. That's one of the things that came up the other night, and we'll we'll discuss at the meeting. At our committee meeting, is what? How do we? Um, how do we invite students? Do are they by? You know, will they be recommended by a teacher or, you know, other person that they're close with, or will it just be open and students can just um, apply if they're interested? And I think that's why I've been trying to look at how other programs other, do it yes. because there that's is a right. wide variance to that. You know. Because also just because, a te let's say a teacher doesn't happen to like a certain poet right. because he, she, they speak for a community that the teacher really may not be fond of or know about. Does that exclude that student whose writing may be something really phenomenal, you know? Right. So there's a conversation to be had that is outside of just school stuff, but at the same time needs to be had. You're mm -hmm. absolutely right. right. We also, maybe you guys should comment on this. We were talking about that this first Northampton Poet Laureate should be a, a Northampton student. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Ken, I really appreciate that, that comment. And I've had, I had a little conversation with Freeman about this a while back and it's come to the forefront of my mind again because last week the city had a police review commission meeting. And I was really, really, really impressed by the high school students who spoke. Oh, yeah. They all spoke, like there was a small group, not a, not a huge number of high school students, but a, a small group of high school students showed up 
at a four hour Zoom meeting on a Tuesday night and were so passionate and such great advocates and such great speakers. And I was like, ooh, we really need to have some representation from youth on our board. And Freeman and I had chatted about whether that would be something that would be possible. And, and I, I think we have to get feedback from Brian about whether we can have like a formal appointment or if we could actually have like maybe something called like a youth liaison or a high school liaison where we have, I would say one is maybe not ideal, but maybe two high school students to, to co-represent um, some, some young folks on our I committee. Like, idea. I love and that idea. Mm -hmm. I love that. I also, I love not just making it one so that he, she, they have somebody that they can kick it with and go, God, these adults are really getting <laughs> on damn nerves right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like a little cohort. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. And I guess the question is like, what infrastructure do we need to set up to be able to solicit that kind of participation? Um, what kinds of, of connections do we need to start building? Because because I'm sure like we all know folks who are involved in the public schools in some way, but it's we don't necessarily want like this to be nepotistic, right? So we want to make sure that it's a really open and fair process that anyone who wants to be a part of it can. And we have to make sure we're doing really great outreach. So I wonder if that's something that needs its own committee, if that's something that the school committee wants to yeah. take on. I think maybe for the school committee to work on the DEI work as well to make sure that that process is inclusive. I also be really curious, um, Freeman, your work with, with Renaissance School, I was at Elms during the time that you were there and you've done some amazing stuff, not to toot your horn too much, but it really, and I, you know, I don't know if you're, what your thought is about this process, but you pushed a lot of young talented kids for it. I had a kid at Elms who died to go to that school because of the arts programming. So I just think your expertise would be really helpful. Yeah, I mean, we worked with some wonderful people in the community. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the key, you know, like you're pointing out, you know, it's just critical to reach out beyond the, the reach of the school itself, but into the broader community. And so, yeah, I think that, um, you know, I, I can start with I think it would be good for the school committee, for us, for us, those of us on the subcommittee, Laurie, and if anybody else wants to join, to have a conversation about that. I already have, as I think I mentioned before, a, 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 I think a good working relationship with uh, Laurie Valancourt, the principal at the high school. And, and uh, you know, I know the people over at PVPA a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, they just, they're in the process, I think. I don't remember if they hired a new uh, head of school or not, uh, yeah. but I know some of the people over there. Um, and, you know, I think we want to just reach out to other schools that may, that may have Northampton students at yeah. them. And then, and then to find out who else, what other, what are the resources in the community may have access to some of the students that the teachers may not even know about, right? right? Exactly. The administration exactly. may not even know that exactly. some of the students are actively involved in some aspect of the arts. So yeah, it, I think it's definitely warranted a conversation, but I think we can move forward on it fairly quickly. I'll touch base with uh, Lori Valancourt um, just to, to just to check to see if she's interested and if she has any thoughts about people in the, the school community itself who might want to to, to to be on the committee with us and help think this through. So can we make it an internal goal to have like youth representation by fall 2021? Sounds good. That, that seemed feasible. Like it'll give yeah. the, the school committee and the equity committee time to, to figure out the process, do some outreach, and then maybe we can um, solicit applications and if, if that's the right way, applications, um, and, and decide on folks over the summer. Yeah. I'll have to find out. I wonder if you have to be at least 18 years old or to be in, in the city, community. a municipal. Uh, I mean, you could, they could join the um, you can our join. Yeah, they can definitely join or, committees. Yeah, join committees. That, that wouldn't yeah, be an issue. Right. That would be that'd be great. No and I'm thinking one person of those two might be the youth poet laureate, since he, she, they already will have some access to this group anyway to fold them in, and then to make sure that they have a companion. Right. That'd be awesome. 
Great. So it sounds like that's something that's going to become an agenda item for school committee and mm -hmm. equity committee. And then we'll have to do our individual work and then come convene all together. Luckily, Freeman is on both. So, so that's, that'll be okay. easy. Is anyone else interested in joining school committee? Right now it's Freeman and Lori. Mm -hmm. And you could always join the process later too. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, it looks like th that is, I think, related to volunteers a little bit, but our traditional volunteer conversation is tabled since we're not doing in-person yeah. first yeah. night. Right, exactly, at this point. And besides, uh, it's just right now, it just looks like it's me because Kathy Murray is no longer on this council. So. Oh, she isn't? No, yeah, unless she's on, she's, is she on the municipal? Is, is she? I know she does treasury stuff, but to be honest with you, I, I that, I'm not even sure if she's on municipal, on the municipal. Did she resign? She said that she was going to be on the municipal. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I can't remember. I didn't even put her down at the last meeting if she's on municipal, but okay. I may be wrong, but I thought that's what she had said. Okay. She's been absent. I, I just wanted to say meeting. something. Sorry, yeah. Ellen. I said she's been absent for a few meetings. Yeah. So. Um, I just wanted to say something. I was looking quickly at the the applicants already that have been submitted mm -hmm. or that are not finished, but are in draft form. And so it looks like um, it's a fairly even distribution between music, theater, and multidisciplinary, and, and then last in the other categories right now. So that may change dramatically. It may be very different, but that's where things stand right now. How many applicants are there now? 17. Oh, not many. Not many right now. Yeah. Wow. And they're and almost all of them are in in draft form and Jesse hasn't declared what his category is yet. Mm -hmm. Um so this took me an embarrassingly long <laughs> amount of time, but I am missing a few categories. And it, this could have been an update, but I'm in the the new application. Okay. Um I'll, I'll type these out, but it's okay. dan uh, dance, music, theater, visual arts, media arts, literature, folk arts, oh humanities, multidisciplinary, and science. Oh, my God. I okay. do think they've added some since last year. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you, if you can type it out. Yeah, I will. Great. Thanks. I'm trying to do. Oh, Jesse asked a question about um, being able to submit as an arts council member, you can submit. Jesse will just need to recuse himself from deliberating on, on that application. And and you, uh, Jesse, you should also not be reviewing that app, your own application. <laughs> and the, but they can, they can, you can review the app, you can review another category, right? Yeah. yeah, so. How come people are disappearing? I have Rachel's name, but no Rachel. Oh, sorry. I'm I'm just. Uh, well, okay. people sometimes will go if you if the if you're doing something you don't want you know you need a little privacy or you yes. Know, uh, <laughs> I, I have oh, to like and, you know, you've got pasta. <laughs> yeah, if you go to the bathroom or something, you're not just leaving. You know, it's like... Smoking a big bong or something. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, you no, know, it's like. Uh, Why would you be private about that? Just to remind everyone that we are recording. Right. <laughs> oh, <God>. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. Um, so they I. They are opening like two new things downtown. Like it's, it's, right. it's, it's a problem. Legal. It's out. Right. Yeah. That's, that's what, what's his name uh, with uh, all his buildings here was saving it for the pot places. Our <laughs> empty building fronts. The one right downtown is going to have a coffee store right next to a coffee shop right next to it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I used to say when I was living down over uh, <laughs> like well, <laughs> living on Pleasant Street, it's the clinic alley. You know, it's got like, you know, we had the pot, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so um, I'm not sure. Should Kathy, are we doing an ink meeting? Well, there's only, as far as I can see, I mean, if there's anything on it, I mean, I don't know because the first night is really part of the municipal, but as far as the ink, it's just me <laughs> it's like right here. So um, I don't know if we have any, any. Um, I should look to see on what the agenda is. If the only thing on that agenda was first night 
and yeah. Brian did send around the financials, but yeah. um yeah I'm not really prepared to discuss yeah. them with I mean, him. So. The only thing with yeah, and I agree. I think you know the the thing about the first night, as far as I understand, it's happening. Steve and, and uh Peter are, are doing the doing the um recording of the events and stuff. And I don't know in terms of like the financials, but and I don't know where our merch is. I want to find out. I want my uh, <laughs> my face mask with an arts council logo mm -hmm. on it or something. I think it is going, I don't know if it's online yet, but it is going to be sold online mm -hmm. through um, Cedar Chest. Cedar Chest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they offer to host some of our yeah. merchandise, great. which is great. Mm -hmm. I right. saw it with the first night announcement, uh, a link to that stuff. OK. Yeah, it's it's up, and the schedule says it's coming. Okay. Okay. Good. And I haven't heard from Brian yet about having us record ad advertising. Please I ask about that. Yeah. Um. So I'll send an email to follow up with him about that. Mm -hmm. And the idea was that folks on the board might um record, you know, a couple of seconds about why the arts council's work is important, and encourage people to to mm -hmm. donate to the GoFundMe. Right. It's but yeah. Especially now we don't have ticket sales and stuff. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll follow up with him on that because okay. I imagine he's going to want our spots soon. Okay. Yeah. And you um, think it sends us, you know, having, I'm on the board at Northampton Neighbors and we had to do some, some recording of, of different things. So if somebody could get to us what we have to do, that'd be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, does anyone else have anything they want to share or discuss? No? All right. Well, I think we covered all of our agenda items. So I guess on that note, I'll, I'll... wait, sorry. Someone going to say something? No, I just, you know, I guess I looking for the, I guess I can just put down the, the look at the voting. We didn't really, we'll just meld it together. It's good enough. <laughs> the, the timing of, for the minutes. It's fine. Do you, do you, do you want to call another vote on the minutes, Kathy? No. Oh, just in terms of closing the municipal and opening the, um, open the the ink board you know i, I do oh i was gonna i was gonna move to close municipal and then just end the meeting without okay. a formal good enough good enough that's perfect do we do we need to hold the ink meeting well you know it's it's funny because i i you know my sense is that the first night even though we ha you know we we do a lot of it the money and stuff does it go into the ink funding or you know how much of it is is a municipal um, activity versus how much is it an ink activity? I don't know how you really can talk about that. So, Brian did send us the financials, which is mm. an ink matter. Okay. So I'm going to move to close oh. our meeting. Okay. And folks can stay on the call as we continue. Okay. Second, all in favor? Mm. All right. Uh, and now, do I have to move to open the ink? Yep. All right. I move to open the ink. Good. Good enough. Good enough. I'm going to say good night. I say okay. Thank you, Lori. Good night. Bye, Thank everyone. Good night. Take care. Bye. 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 Um, so for ink, mm -hmm. do we want to take a look at financials? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Rachel, for I you know, I don't know if this is necessary or not, but because Brian, it, it's the structure that uh, I've always known, so I wasn't sure if we would be like dropping the ball by not doing it. So, <laughs> okay, no, this is quite fine, and I, I guess, uh, yeah, no, this is, I'm fine. I'm gonna, I haven't, I didn't look closely at that financial. Yeah, I haven't either, I'll admit to that. Uh, open it again, even. Mm. Okay. I mean, even, I can, even if all we do at this meeting is table it until the next one, when right, we've got Brian right. here, I think that's enough for the note. I, yeah, I think that's, 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 you know, cause he could be better off to explain. I mean, exactly. No, that's a good point. Thank you, Rachel. All right. We well, won't, um, we won't be meeting again until after January 1st. Oh, so I just wanted to, is there a need for board members to participate in any way on first night? I think it's not 
volunteering in the traditional sense, but I think the, the request that Brian made was to have folks record um, asks for donations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we just, he just hasn't, I'm sure he's just busy and hasn't sent us how to do that yet. He, he mentioned um, the possibility of doing a Google form for us to all just submit our, our mm -hmm. video recordings mm -hmm. or even just going down to um, 33 Holly Street and record live mm -hmm. in, the, in the space. Um, but I don't think so. I think it's like, he just wants us to stream and I'm sure it would be yeah. great if you're going to watch on Facebook, for instance, if you could like and comment, like oh. that's a good way to boost, mm -hmm. um, you know, what's going on or share it on your pages is another good way to boost um, the reach that the recording will have. But mm -hmm. otherwise, I don't think he needs anything from us. Okay. Um, probably like some moral support. Yeah. Encouragement. I'm sure he's exhausted. Mm. Um, right. Great. Cool. Great. Excellent. Well done. Do we have to move to close the ink meeting? Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, it's just me. I make a motion. To, <laughs> to I close. think I'll second it. I think I'm on ink yeah. now too. Oh, are you on both? Great. I, yeah, yeah okay. it happened with my Connecticut situation. Oh, but then it, oh yeah, perfect. So. Okay. So I think I'm in here, Rachel. Great, excellent. Kathy, I think I am too now. Yes, you me. are. Yes, yes. And I, I think I will be. <laughs> right. Oh, few about the lone one. Excellent. Good, good. <laughs> Great. So I'll second it. <laughs> on favor. Great. Okay. Um, excellent. All of our meetings are closed. Thank you all, all right. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, Danielle. Bravo. Danielle, well done. Well done. <laughs> An hour and 20 minutes. That's good. I know. <laughs> With very thorough well, intro. Well done too. So and no yeah. real updates. <laughs> awesome. Well, well thank you everyone. Well, Have a great rest you. of your night. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great yeah. care. Bye bye. Thank you all. Got Albert getting copy.